Hey guys, Gabriel Varga here. Today we're back with my series where we look at the best fighters in the world and I give you training tips so you can be a little bit more like them in your fights or in the gym when you're sparring. And today guys, we are covering Nikki Holtzkin. He has such an assortment, an array of techniques, variety that he uses. I think he is a super exciting guy to cover. I know he's a fan favorite, so let's dive right in to Nikki Holtzkin. All right, guys, if you are new to this series, this segment of videos that I've been making where we talk about the best fighters in the world and training tips you can utilize to be a little bit more like them in the gym, make sure you look in the description box down below for other fighters I've covered. We've covered Petrosian, we've covered Bukau, Canelo, McGregor. The list is growing and growing. People are loving this segment. If you guys are excited about this video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed, and let's move on to point number one. All right, guys, the first thing we have to mention when we are talking about Nikki Holtzkin is his left body shot. Now this is my favorite punch, but it also looks like it's his. He does some things stylistically different than me, but he's pulling it off very nicely. So I wanna mention the things that he is doing, which makes him so effective and things you can try and utilize to make sure you're starting to pull this technique off. Now the first thing that I wanna talk about is how I teach people to throw the body shot. And the very first thing is keeping the weight 50-50. I generally talk about putting too much weight. If I lean too much weight over the front foot and I throw my body shot, there are a number of things that can go wrong. And I'd say this is very tried and true for many fighters. You don't see them put lots of weight on the front, but Nikki often does. And there's a couple reasons this works for him. So normally when a lot of times people lean their weight over their front foot, what ends up happening is they put themselves, they come here straight down the center line. They lean in, try to throw the body shot and they put their head right in that center point where they can get countered. But a lot of times when Nikki throws it, he'll lean over to the side and he'll put, I'd say about 70% of the weight on the front foot. Now, the reason this often does not work in my opinion for a lot of people is when we put too much weight on the front foot, the power is lacking because there's no twist through the body the way you normally want to throw the shot. If I put my weight on my front foot and I try to engage my hip, there's no pivot on that front leg because the foot is flat with most of the weight on it. But what Nikki does so well is on his setup, when he comes from here to here, very technically incorrect, he will often let his hand leave his head to get that body shot off, but he gets lots of power off it. He may come from the head hook down to the body, uppercut down to the body, head hook down to the body. But the reason it works for him is opposed to me where I'll go one, two, and I'll come right from here. He'll go one, two, he'll load his arm up. And then if his head's off the center line, he has the ability to swing. As I said, it's not technically correct, but because he does such a good job of getting his head off the center line and he leads with something first, he can then throw that shot very nicely. Another thing that leaning the weight on the front foot does nicely for him is it allows him to throw from a very, very long distance. So if he came with a cross, and normally a lot of people, if I was back here, 50-50 and I try and throw, I'm out of range. But because he leans, he can then catch the body quite easy. You just need to be hyper aware of the counter shots that are gonna come. If you come here, your hand's down, you throw here, Often his other hand is down, but he does not usually get tagged because like we said, his head is off to the side, so he's no longer on that center path for a straight shot. If people wanna hit him, they have to come off to the side, and by that point, he's already landed to the body and generally moved away. So if you're wanting to get good at this shot, you're wanting to throw it a little bit like him, what you need to do is you need to set yourself up at about this range. You can throw some light shots, make sure your arms are almost at full extension, and then when you're ready and you're tapping away, you shift your weight over the front, leg you close that distance a little bit more and then you can throw he's also very good as we already mentioned at working off the same hand he hits once he draws his arm back twists the hips and then unwinds back very canelo-esque in the combo style except canelo would be a little bit tighter when he throws it whereas holtzkin comes one and two but make no mistake this is a super powerful shot again if you're wanting to work you can just come from here shift the weight to the front and then let that shot drive right in. That's gonna give you loads of power when your arm comes from down here and you swing in, you've closed that distance because the weight is over the front foot. If you can land this shot on somebody, especially the way that he does where he throws a couple up high first, he gets them to raise their guard up and that body is wide open. 
people are gonna go down. Just like they do when you see him land the shot and people drop. Next guys, I wanna talk about Nicky's high guard. His high guard is so good at blocking shots. He doesn't do anything exceptionally brilliant when he has his hands up. He just has his arms up here, but most fighters when they have their hands up here, their body becomes completely open. What he does so nicely is if you look at my torso, instead of standing straight up right and drawing the arms up where you can see this whole body has become exposed, he curls, he curls his back. So instead of standing straight, the back arches, the hands are now super high, but because he pulls his elbow down to his hip, he stays extremely protected. And because his stance is nice and wide, his hands are up high, his elbows are in tight. From here, he's able to guard up so well, it's very hard for people to land big clean shots on him when he falls to this guard. He does get tagged with single shots often from the outside because he doesn't hold this position constantly. But when somebody approaches him, he drops to his Dutch style guard. He sort of collapses his back. Great defense. So what you guys can do to drill this is, what even if you're on your own, this is better done with a partner. You know, you're hitting pads or something, your partner comes in to hit you and you just collapse. Collapse through the back. Or collapse sounds like the wrong word. It's not really collapsing. It's just rounding. You're gonna round out your body. But you don't wanna always stand like this. You do wanna be nice and strong and high sometimes too. So doing the position change through your back is very important. So if you're shadow boxing, my back is straight. Then I imagine somebody comes at me, I base through my feet so I'm nice and strong and I just round that back out and from here I can then utilize footwork to get myself out of range that I want to be at. Obviously you don't want to fight your whole fight right from here that's not ideal and one final point I want to note on his guard is what his hands do. So normally a lot of people when they guard up they come like so which leaves the front of the head exposed or they'll take the same part of the glove, this two parts here that connect, and they'll put this against their forehead. But he takes the thumb area and he just puts that right against his face. I'm not 100% sure if there's really much difference between the way that I like to hold my hands, which is more like this, and the way he holds them, which is more like this. But you can definitely play around with that. Instead of having your hands like this, the way I hold them, just turn them like that. This honestly might be a better way to throw your counter shots. From here, I have a little bit more rotation that I have to get out of when I throw my cross. I have to really rotate the hand, whereas from here, it's straight out and it's less work. Now moving on guys, but sort of segmenting right from this high guard, that Dutch style guard, I wanna talk about what he does with his counter left hook, why it's so effective, and what you guys can do to be more effective with your left counter hook. Now the thing about the Dutch guard, the thing as soon as you guard up like this, as soon as you have that position, generally you're dealing with shots with a fairly tight body. Your body needs to be tight, your arms need to be flexed. If your arms aren't flexed and you have a loose guard here, you're going to get battered down fairly quick and somebody will find an opening. So the Dutch guard with the hands up is all about maintaining that shell, which requires some force and some tension through the arms. The downside of tension, just like when you throw a punch, is it slows you down. So if you maintain, let's say, a tight guard right up to the forehead, but if I maintain right here with tight arms, and then I go to throw my counter shot, I block, I throw my counter shot, and I'm slow. So what you need to do to be good at the left counter hook, like Nikki Holtzkin, is you need to make sure that you're able to go from tense on the defense to relaxed on the punch, obviously just until you make impact and then you tighten everything up again. But it's that ability to go from tense to loose, from tense to loose. So I know a lot of us still right now don't have training partners, but if this is something that you wanna work, something you wanna get better at, what you need to do is if you have a bag or you're shadow boxing, you need to be practicing, okay, I block, and my muscle here, I've tightened my arm almost as much as I can for a split second. I tense it and then I relax it to get my counter off. And hopefully you guys can see the difference in the speed. I'm gonna go off this arm right now. If I keep it tight the whole time, I go block. That's about as fast as I can go. Block, that's tight. That's a tight, slow response. Now I go tight, relaxed, tight, relaxed. It is so much faster when you're able to go from relaxed to tight, relaxed to tight, offense, defense, give and take. So if you guys are working right now, you're at home, you're working away, you're like, oh, I want to get better at defense, but I don't have anybody to work with me. You can work loose, 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 tight, 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 loose, 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 tight, 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 loose. Trying to get that body going from that tension to that relaxed aspect you want for when you throw your counter shots. And one of the reasons that he's so effective with his left hook is his ability to go from tight and then to throw the shot so fast that when somebody hits him, 
before they get their hand back to their head, he's already on the attack. If you wait for your opponent or your partner to hit, pull back, and now you counter, you've lost the opening. It has to be counter now. Counter now. Not counter now. Counter now. It has to be very, very quick. So the hands are here, your body's slightly arched, and then when you see the shot come, you feel it hit your arm, you right away come to that counter left hook. So guys, we've talked about a left body shot, we've talked about a counter left hook, we've talked about a very tight guard. These are all very Dutch style sounding techniques. And make no mistake, Nicky Holtzkin is a very Dutch style fighter, but he is also very different than the typical Dutch fighter where they will just stand in front, they'll take the shots, they'll throw their combo back, they'll throw the low kick, they'll take the blocks, they'll throw their shots that come with the low kick. He does do that, but he also mixes in a nice array of spinning techniques. These spinning techniques, I believe, make him a much more versatile fighter and make him that much more dangerous than your average Dutch fighter. And I'm gonna throw up some video footage right now where you will see him throw the spinning back fist the spinning side kick, the spinning hook kick. All of these techniques might not be the highest percentage KO shot. Something like a basic cross is gonna have a bigger chance of landing and knocking somebody down than a spinning technique. But the spinning techniques come out of nowhere very often. They can score the knockdown, but more importantly, they alter the pace of the fight. They alter the timing of the fight and they make people a little bit more scared, a little bit more hesitant. So the techniques that a lot of kickboxers just sort of write off, they go, ah, oh, you know what? It's a karate style kick, whatever. I'm not gonna bother learning it or practicing it. It doesn't need to be your go-to technique, but busting out a spinning hook kick once in a while or other techniques that will throw people off are very effective. I have a breakdown of the spinning hook kick. You can check that out up there where we get into more detail if you're still questioning your technique or why you're not able to land it. Techniques like spinning back fist, which are unorthodox for the Muay Thai fighters have helped me so much. Nikki's ability to not be the typical Dutch fighter and just stand square in front and just exchange combo for combo. He's able to utilize footwork. He's able to utilize fancy techniques. All of those techniques help make him a more dangerous fighter, which in my opinion makes it easier for him to land those shots, which he's really, really effective with. If he only came out with that body shot and the counter left hook, and those were sort of his two primary go-to things, and he didn't mix in anything else, I don't think he would be as effective with them. But scaring people with the spinning techniques and allowing himself a little more distance because they don't want to get in there and engage, I think it helps him overall. And finally, guys, I want to talk about one unorthodox thing that Nikki does, which you don't see a lot of kickboxers do, which is when their guard is up. We're gonna imagine Bob has an arm here. There's something protecting his head, a glove's protecting his head. He'll reach across, he'll pull down, and he'll throw the counter shot. I'll throw up a clip so you guys can check the footage on what I'm talking about, see it a couple times. One of the easiest ways, in my opinion, to land this shot is to throw a couple jabs out, get your partner to guard up here. Once they've had the high guard, all you have to do is reach across, pin their hand, drag it forward and right away there's nothing blocking that hook. You can also do it the other way. You could come with a cross or a jab cross, or reach across, drag forward and throw the counter. This is something that you'll see Lomachenko do very often. It's very effective, but again, not utilized as much by kickboxers because very often we are trying to stand and bang as opposed to sometimes just being tricky and doing things like touching, touching, getting them to pull the guard up, grabbing and throwing that sneaky little shot behind the air. Your timing on this needs to be impeccable because if you grab, you pull and you wait, they're gonna simply, as their egg, arm gets dragged down, they're just gonna disconnect it and pull it back. So the timing, if a normal punch is kind of one, two, three, four, this needs to be one, two. It's two shots and one beat, essentially. One, two, three, four, five. When you do this shot and you wanna work on it, you check and make sure you're safe. But when you reach, don't reach with your shoulder down because now if I grab here and he throws the counter across, I'm gonna eat it, keep your shoulder up. I'm touching, I'm touching, I'm touching. And then I slide my hand across. I grab, but not with my shoulder down, with my shoulder nice and high. I pull across and I use the same hip motion, the, the pull into the punch in one motion. I don't go pull and then punch. It's drag hit. So you guys can practice this. You know, you're touching away, reach across, one, two. Hip motion comes together or off the other side. I'm throwing my punches. I reach across one, two. The grab and pull is gonna be amazing for anybody who keeps their hands up here constantly. If the person's hands are always here, 
it's going to be easy to find that arm to drag down. This is my style. My style is right here and I have a couple sparring partners who love to try this on me to work it and I have to say they are effective. What I have to do defensively is remember if they grab my hand, I just need to distance myself. I can, If they drag down, I can distance myself, leave my arm back there and then let it drop and pull it back. But if I just stand my ground, they drag down. I don't really have anything I can do here except for slip and the timing is so fast that by the time they drag and pull, the shot should already be hitting you. This grab and pull punch is effective. It is sneaky. It is something that you should be trying if you have not already. All right, guys, there are five things that make Nikki Holtzkin so good with tips that you can utilize to be a little bit more like him. Are these the only things that make him good? Absolutely not. I just chose these five things because I really like them. I really appreciate them as a fighter. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. Train hard guys, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.